What's up, what's up, good fam? I'm so excited for this very special episode. We have a very special guest in the house. This is her second time on the What That's Good podcast, and this time she is coming with a brand new book, my greenhouse poetry book. We have the author right here. It is Bella Mayo. What? I'm so excited. We need to a be live here. audience. Um, no, I, it's actually really funny too because I was like going to say Bella Rob and then I was like Bella Mayo, like you have a new last name. I know, it's so exciting. That it's is, like the perfect timing too. It's the perfect timing and I actually love when I was reading the book how it says like Mayo at the top. I know, it's so fun. It's like so different in like Every time I even see it, I'm like, whoa, this it's is crazy. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. Well, we're going to have a great conversation. This is also Bella's birthday week. What up? So birthday week, we got a book coming out, and she's just turning 19. And so you've accomplished a lot in your young years of life. Um, I have to say, when I was reading this book, I was absolutely shook, y'all. Like, I <laughs> am not a poetry reader. I've never read a poetry book. And honestly, like, I just didn't know. Like, I knew I was going to like it because you wrote it, obviously. But I didn't know how I was going to relate to every single page. Like, you said, I don't want people to think about me. And I was like, I'm going to think about you. Like, I know you. I know your story. I didn't. I thought about me. Like, I thought about yeah. the things I've walked through, the people that I've been in relationships with. And you just crushed it. I mean, I wish that these cameras were on me whenever I was actually reading the book <laughs> because I went through every emotion. I literally started out and I was like, this is so sweet. And then I was like, oh, my gosh. Then I was like mad. Then I was like, are you kidding me? And I was laughing out loud because you're a savage. And then I was like, yes, hope for a future. Then I was like, no, we're going back. Then I was like, no, we're moving forward. Like, it was just like all the emotions. And yeah. I just loved it and could not sing more praises. I got on Instagram and just told everyone how awesome it was. And I'm like, please, nobody think that I'm saying this because she's my sister. This is actually an incredible, incredible book. And it is an incredible story. Um, before we deeply dive into this, first, I want to ask you, you know, we have to ask a piece of advice. Of so give us a piece, the best piece of dating advice you've ever been given, considering this is a book about love. I think that, um, I was thinking about this before because we talked about it earlier. And I think that like my best piece of dating advice is actually breakup advice, which sounds weird, but I feel like a lot, necessary. Like, a lot of dating, um, there's like one that ends up not breaking up, but a lot of them do end yeah. up that way. And I think True. a so many questions I get asked, like people message me on Instagram, like, what's your best breakup advice? Because so many people are dealing with it and it's so hard. And that's exactly why I wrote this book because I was there that's in cool. that dark place. And so I think that my best piece of breakup advice is that you can't wait for closure or an apology. You can't wait for it. Like you mm. have to take it upon yourself to move on mm. and let Jesus help you through it. So and like, good, Bella. Pour, just dive into your relationship with God mm -hmm. and you have to like move on yourself. You can't yeah. wait for someone to like choose to move on. You can't wait for someone to have closure with you. You can't wait for that apology because yeah. a lot of times it's not going to come and yeah. you can't beg for it. You just have to trust in God and move on yourself and take yep. that upon yourself. No, I think that's amazing advice. You actually even wrote about that in the book about how you waited for like a couple months and you were like super I want to say like anxious and like yes. still really sad. And then like, it's crazy how the words I'm sorry, like freed you in a moment, yeah. which was a beautiful thing in the book to read that like, I'm sorry, I freed you. But it was also like an understanding of like, I didn't have to waste those couple months waiting yeah, for an I'm sorry. Sure. Because the truth is, like she said, like sometimes that sorry never comes, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. it happens two months later. In my case, with my story, it happened a few years later until yeah. I was like, okay, I got closure. And then I look back and I'm like, why did I waste two years of wondering and worrying and being anxious yeah. over, you know, waiting on words like, I'm sorry, whenever like I needed to let God redeem the story, yeah. not this person yeah. coming back into my life. Yeah. And too many times that happens, like mm -hmm. too many times it happens that you just end up waiting and waiting and waiting and it never comes and you're losing these great years yeah. that could be awesome, yeah. fun years filled with new experiences yeah. and new relationships friendships. and new people, yeah. friendships and love and like all of that that you're wasting just waiting for someone else to waiting grow up on it. Really, I'm sorry. It's you that needs to just move on, you know? Sheesh. 
don't don't you snap in the <laughs> yes. poetry world? Snaps. Um, Snaps. Okay, I have to say, I know you probably better than anyone besides your husband and our mom. Like, we shared a room our whole life. I love doing life with you. You're one of my best friends. But when I read this book, I could not believe you wrote this book. <laughs> I was like... Like I talked to you and like <laughs> like you're deep. Like you're you're wise. Like don't get me wrong. I've always known that. But this was a different level. This was something special. I didn't even mm-hmm. know you talked like this. Like I didn't even know this was a part of you. Yeah. So how did you write this book? How did you even get inspired to write a poetry book? And I know yeah. I know you're really deep and like thoughtful, but like how did this happen? Yeah, it's so funny cuz so many people say that. Mom has said that my other best friend when she read it, she was like you were this deep? And I was like, I know, it's funny because you don't know it. But anyways, when I was in in high school, I was a freshman in high school, and I had this deep fear that like someone was gonna read my journal. Like you someone, did. I had this fear. You like did. if someone was gonna read my journal, it was going to be like the worst moment of my life. I just had that fear. And so I started to write with no names. So I just started like taking out anyone's name. He, I wrote he, she, they, I wrote I, you, like I wrote letter form, you did this to me and I felt this. And I started writing like that, which in turn just, I guess, turned into poetry Hmm. and I didn't even realize it. That's cool. And so I have a whole entire book from the first year I started that, that has not a single name in the whole entire book. Wow. And it's really funny because before that I was the person who was like, so-and-so did this and did it in my journal, but you did. I just had this fear after that. For some reason, once I got into high school, that someone was going to read it, so I started writing like that. Wow. And actually, when I was in eighth grade, um, I had a, like a school project to write a poem, and I wrote this poem that won like the school thing, and my English teacher um, like was so moved and inspired by it that she wrote it on her arms while she ran a world marathon. Wow. Um, it's actually the one the I lion. talked about in the last I love um, that podcast. So, um, that happened. And I think I just kind of was like motivated and encouraged, like yeah. that my poetry could do this, could inspire someone mm-hmm. that much to like, feel like they could get through such a hard thing mm-hmm. in their life. Like a world marathon. Like yeah. if someone could write that on their arms and it make them like help them get through it, then, like, yeah. I wanted to do that forever. Yeah. So. For those who didn't listen to the last podcast, can you remind them of what that yeah. poem said? Yeah, um, that poem I wrote said, um, I'm a lion finding my roar. I was once a shadow, but now I'm much more. I will no longer be silent. I will no longer be still. I'm a lion who found the roar. <laughs> I love and that so one. That was the first poem I ever wrote. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's crazy, Bella. It's, it's so impressive. And most of this book, she literally wrote when she was 15 years old. And it's crazy because you would think a 15 year old doesn't understand love. Like, they don't <laughs> understand like what you go through. No, 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 no. Let me tell you, she nailed it for every age. And I think that's the Holy Spirit because you were able to articulate things that people that um, are 40 are walking through right now or 50 yeah. are walking through right now. Th- people yeah. in their mid-20s, people who are 15, like you cover such a broad um, group of people. Um, why my greenhouse? Why is it called that? A lot of people ask that. And um, the reason that it's called that is actually in the book, um, the first opening poem and the closing poem both talk about this greenhouse and my thought on the greenhouse was that you grow and you grow plants and you grow all this stuff um but one day if you move you have to move it all you know you have to pack it up if it if it stops growing and all this stuff if you don't water it if you don't take care of it if you don't nurture it it wilts you know and Mm so that was kind of my idea for it so the opening poem says my garden, absolutely mesmerizing. I come in, I water you, I shower you with light and sun all of my days in order to grow you to your best you. My greenhouse that never stops growing, just like a real life garden, I could look at you all day long. I love it. And so that opens the book with all the happiness and joy. And the book goes through five different stages, um, falling in love, loving, heartache second chance and heartbreak and so then once you get through the heartbreak um it ends on a really hopeful note and so after that it closes with the day has come to pack up my greenhouse and move on to the next the child in me kicking and screaming not quite ready to leave its home the mother in me sad but holding a smile knowing it's for the best and all of me grateful for the days of happiness in my sweet little place and equally grateful for the days of frustration 
As I box up all the sweetest memories, as I box up all the growth, and leave behind all the pain, I say goodbye, my greenhouse. It's time to plant somewhere new. Dang, and she did. You did yeah. put somewhere new. You got a ring on your finger. Yes, I do. Um. So whether you're going on a walk, a run, walking back from the grocery store, no matter where you are, we all want to feel safe, don't we? And sometimes it's hard to, and sadly in the day that we live. But Birdie can help you out with feeling safe no matter where you are and just give you a little bit more of a peace of mind. I actually have one on my keychain, super cute. It's in yellow, so you don't even notice that you're carrying around an alarm system. But literally all you do is you just pull this trigger and it will sound an 130 decibel siren and flashing strobe light to deter an attack. It will keep sounding the alarm for up to 40 minutes on one set of batteries and it's totally reusable. Unlike pepper spray and other deterrents, Birdie is no danger for you. You can feel confident to use it without any worry. And that's the thing. Sometimes, you know, you feel like you should have something to carry with you, but you don't even know if you're going to be able to use it in the moment. This is the perfect thing. And in fact, I've worked with security guards in the past and have just told me if you could just make a loud noise, like that's the best way to, you know, make an attacker leave. And so Birdie does that and it does it in a fast, really easy easy way. It's also pretty cute to carry around so you won't notice yourself lugging around like a big alarm system. It's just a little thing on your keychain that has multiple colors. Very cute. Over 300,000 birdie alarms have been sold and they have thousands of five-star reviews. So join the flock today for a safer tomorrow. Right now, She's Birdie is offering Well That's Good listeners 15% off your first purchase whenever you go to she'sbirdie.com slash woe. Go to she's birdie, spelled S-H-E-S-B-I-R-D-I-E dot com slash woe for 15% off your first purchase. That's she's birdie.com slash woe. So uh, that's what I love about the book and We'll talk about, I want to go through actually a lot of it. But first, I want to to hit on what you just said. I wanted to end hopeful. And that was like a really important thing for you because a lot of poetry books don't end that way. It's like they end on a really, which I I haven't read, but I've heard. They end in a very like somber note or kind of sad or like Mm -hmm. what just happened or I'm totally in my feels note. Um, But you ended with hope. So what was your intention on that? Yeah, um, my intention on that was... Actually, I really wanted the book to end with the, that like heartbreak chapter mm-hmm. because a lot of relationships do in that way. And so I really wanted it to end with that heartbreak chapter, but I really wanted that hope at the end because with my story, I know that like in that time of heartbreak, mm-hmm. I felt so no hope. I felt absolutely no hope. I felt like there was no way out, no light at the end of the tunnel. I felt like I had no idea how I was going to make it out of this. This mm-hmm. was the worst thing that happened to me, which at 16, 15, it feels that way, you know? And so I felt that way at that time. But looking at my story, like, there was hope. And, like, mm-hmm. with Jesus, there always is hope. Yep. And, like, when you love the Lord and you trust in Him and you serve Him, like, there is always hope. That's right. And, and there's always light at the end of the tunnel. No matter what happens, mm-hmm. there's always a greater plan for you. And I see that so much with my story. Like in that moment, I felt Mm -hmm. so like hopeless and like there was a greater plan for me. Yes. And there was a bigger story for me. Well, I think when you're that age and you have such a deep relationship or really any age that you have like this great relationship where maybe it's a couple years you date or you're totally in love and you start talking about marriage, you start talking about your future and you really do visualize yourself with them forever. You envision your kids and your life and where you're going to mm-hmm. live and then all of a sudden it's over it does feel hopeless because yeah. you're like wait that was my life and then mm-hmm. you're like well what is my life and it kind of feels like your life yeah. is over because all of your plans were dependent on mm-hmm. this relationship staying together or um and so I think you're right that that is a very hopeless feeling. Yeah. However, like we don't know the end of our story and God does. Yeah. And like, that's why it's so important to like choose to go into the next day because yeah. every day there's something new and it talks about in the Bible, like his mercies are new every single morning. And mm-hmm. so every day there's a new opportunity. There's a new chance. There's a new joy. There's a new love. There's a new story waiting for you. And so yeah. I love that you did that because I think it's going to bring girls a lot of hope realizing we've both been there and that mm-hmm. feeling of like life is over and we've yeah. both moved on yeah and because of jesus before even our guy he redeemed our life restored our life mm-hmm. and now we're happily married and thank yeah. god we kept going you know mm-hmm. okay so we're gonna go through some of the poems in here that i think are just incredible um to start 
even just what you dedicated it to. And I think this really sums up everything about the book. Everything else I'm gonna let you read, but I wanna read this because I think that this really takes you into everything. And you said, and to love, you are my worst fear, my greatest dream, what I look forward to and what I run from. You make me feel every emotion. You can change my mind in a heartbeat. You make me smile and scream, yet I always want you back. And I was like, that is literally it. That is like, we've all felt that. Like love is yeah. our biggest dream, but it's also our worst fear. It, it's the thing that makes us light up and get, get in. It's the mm-hmm. thing that makes us cry in our room all alone. And it makes us feel every emotion, but yet like we keep going back because yeah. the chance to love is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's one yeah. of life's greatest, you know, experiences. And so I thought that that started off the book so well. Um, let's go through some of these. Okay, so let's talk about my one and only. Okay, my one and only says, People often say you make my world go round. And as much as my semi-melancholic self hates to say it, my quarter blithe self understands what it means. You make skating feel like floating. You make walking feel like dancing. You make running feel like freedom. And you make me love me too. I love that. Yeah. Um, one thing I loved about it was you make me love me too. And I think that that is a really good thing in relationships is that like you want to be the best version of yourself in a relationship. And if you are like falling in love with someone, you should also love who you're becoming. And so I just thought that was a good thing to note. And like in this stage of relationship, it was healthy. Yeah. And when, um, I think when you're found like the right person and someone who's really like good for you and loves you for you Mm -hmm. and they're like constantly like seeing those like little things about you that you may not even see, Mm -hmm. like how you help others, you pick up everyone's plate and wash dishes, like the way you do that and like they see that and can Mm -hmm. call that out in you and say like, you are so helpful and caring and like you are exactly what a woman of god should be and like when they tell you that it makes you want to like love your love you too you know and like i think that's what i meant by that like and like you make running feel like freedom you make walking feel like dancing like you make every little thing that i do feel good easy and good yes And that's, I feel like, how it should be in a healthy start to relationship. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to note that because um, a lot of people ask me dating advice, too, and they ask, like, you know, how you know if it's a good relationship. And I always like to say, well, how are you healthy? How are mm-hmm. you doing? Because a lot of times we get into relationships and, like, if you're not aware, you don't even realize how, like, all of a sudden you're insecure and all of a sudden yeah. you are, like, you know – like not doing the things that you've always done. Like yeah. you're, you're get the things that you're gifted and in, you're insecure about now. And yeah. like, I love that you said like, uh, you loved yourself at that time. That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing to be like proud of who you are. But um, it doesn't stay that way throughout yeah. the whole book. And I think that's what I want to note later, but it mm-hmm. did start that way. So let's continue on. So this one made me cry. This is my greatest privilege. And um, it made me cry for you. It made me cry for me. It made me cry for every girl that's experienced this. And mm-hmm. I think that most have. Um, so read it and tell us about it. Yeah. So my, great, my greatest privilege says, the moment you are hurt by the hands of a man, the thought of being in another seems reckless. To fully love you, I had to unlearn the idea I had so strongly held on to that in a man's arms is a dangerous place. I often say being loved by you is my greatest privilege. And I mean that when I say it, because the gentleness of your touch and the safety of your arms are privileges I don't take lightly and will never take for granted. So um, that poem obviously is about being hurt by the hands of a man. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, and it's also about finding Jacob and like the love Mm -hmm. of my life and who like makes me feel so safe Mm -hmm. and is so gentle with me and so loving to me. Um, And the reason I wanted to write that is because, like you said, like so many people do go through that Mm -hmm. and like it is horrible. And if you have, like I'm so sorry that you went through that. That is nothing that anyone should ever have Mm -hmm. to go through. But I do remember after that moment that this story is about is that um, I remember thinking the next person I'm with, I'm going to be so careful in choosing, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, like, I think before that, I was kind of just, like, oh, whoever, whatever. Like, yeah. I was just kind of on a little, like, dating rampage. Like, yep. oh, whoever, Been whatever. There. And then, like, I got hurt. 
like yep. hurt bad. And I think when that happened, I was like, no, not anymore. Like yep. not anymore yep. while I let this happen. For now on, like it is like I'm going to be so careful in mm-hmm. choosing a man of God. Yeah, it's so um, important. And so that is what that kind of is about. And so I think important. a lot of people have to deal with that, that yeah. thing of like, once you have that happen to you, it's so scary to go into the next mm-hmm. relationship, but it doesn't have to be no. if you choose carefully yeah. after that and you really, really, really like know what you're getting into. Yeah. Like I love how you said it seems reckless because it's the same thing that hurt you that you're stepping into again, but it's not the same thing. Yeah. It, that was one person. That's not every person. That was one man. That's not every man. If you're anything like me, you're always trying to make a little bit more healthy decisions with your eating, right? Well, sometimes that can just be completely boring, but it doesn't have to be. Magic Spoon is a great way to eat healthy and have fun. It is incredible. It's actually cereal of all things. And I know we all have an inner child in this that just wants to eat cereal every day. And Magic Spoon is a way to do it and be healthy. It has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Plus, only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free, free free of all the bad stuff, but has the good stuff, all the fun stuff. Flavors include cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. They're actually so good. Christian and I both love Magic Spoon and love their flavors. We typically like the fruitier ones, but honestly, they're all so good. Actually, that's not even true. Christian loves the chocolate one. We like them all. Subscribe today to flavors that you'll love, and you can get cereal shipped to your doorstep, not to mention saving more than 25% on every order. You can choose four flavors that you'll love, edit your subscription to switch it up, and keep yourself stocked on cereal. Go to magicspoon.com slash woe5 and use our promo code woe5 to get $5 off your order today at checkout. Try it today. And remember, if you subscribe to Magic Spoon, you get $5 off on top of the 25% saving from subscribing. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, subscribe and get your delicious guilt-free cereal on the regular at magicspoon.com slash woe5 and use my code woe5 to save big. And you might say, well, Sadie, what if like how, what if I don't know how to choose? Like, what if I don't know if this person's good? And to be honest, like sometimes, like I would say, you can't know based off like what other people have said. Like for me, for instance, like something that happened to me that, you know, whenever I kind of went through this experience, this person that did this to me was, you know, um, in a pastor's family and grew up in church and like everyone loved him. So I would never have even thought. And and to be honest, that's why I was not on guard. That's why I was like, oh, well, he'll never hurt me. So I don't have to tell him the things that I would normally Mm -hmm. tell someone about dating. And we don't have to talk about boundaries. And, you know, because he knows that. But just because someone knows it doesn't mean someone actually uh, obeys it. And so I think that that's important that you do protect your heart. The Bible says guard your heart. It's a wellspring of life or from it, everything flows. And so it's like, yeah, you do have to guard your heart. And if you just continue to go into relationship after relationship and you don't um, stop to have important conversations and actually see the person for who they are, you will get hurt. Yeah. Um, And I'll say too, you could also read this metaphorically. Like mm -hmm. it could also be by the hands of a man as being like emotionally yeah like, people get hurt emotionally so bad that you would have the same reaction uh, i don't want to yeah. get in another one after that like i don't want to get in a relationship after yeah. that and like that is reckless too and like yeah. that feels reckless to get in another after yeah. you get hurt emotionally like mm-hmm. that so like i will say like even if you haven't gone through this like mm-hmm. but you have verbally yeah. emotionally spiritually like however that you feel this like yeah. It can be felt in many ways. Yep. I love that in the book you talk about kind of your dating rampage, which I did that too. And it's like after we had this great love, this person that we really, which we'll talk about later, the the one person that we really fell in love with, it was like we were constantly chasing that again. Yeah. Even though it was reckless, even though it hurt us, even though it was bad, we wanted that love again because once you feel that, you crave that. Yeah. And that is really what got both of us hurt. And so I think that we need to talk about a key point in dating right now of like if you're going to continue to date like 
you have to become a healthier version of yourself before you step into mm-hmm. another relationship because a man cannot provide for you the things that only Jesus can. Yeah. He can't heal your heart. He can't redeem the story. He can't like he can be a part of the redemption story. He can be a part of the healing, but he in and of itself himself cannot come in and be like your complete God because he's not yeah. God, you know? Yeah. And the thing too about dating rampages is like, which that's what we're going to call it, but dating, like when you go through those like dating rampages, it's like they all end at like a abrupt stop, abrupt. like a horrible stop. And it's like, when you hit that, it's like, I'm never doing this again, you know? And it's like horrible, but yeah. it's true. It's like Sadie had that moment, like when she was about to date Christian, like I am not dating anyone for months because it's like you get so hurt by so many people that you get to a point where it's just like I can never do this again you know and it feels like that like I will never ever get in another relationship which obviously we both did yeah but the thing is like sometimes those do teach you and sometimes they do really really like 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 they molded me to who Mm -hmm. I am to like choose Jacob Mm -hmm. wisely because honestly like the when that all happened I was like I'm never dating again I was like I'm not dating for years like I just don't (laughs) even want to think about it and it was like another year and a half before I met Jacob but like when I met Jacob I was like okay like I think like this is what like I've been waiting on you know yeah and like I think that like so you said like I was the same way like I fell in love with someone and when they hurt me I was like I don't even care about like that love anymore I just want to do whatever like I want I want to date whoever I want I want to get I just want to you know I just went into this crazy rampage of just like I don't want to think about that I want to think about anything else but that you know and I think people do that through a lot of different things you can numb your feelings and you can numb the want for love in a lot of different ways Mm -hmm. and the truth is like you don't need to numb it because love is a beautiful thing but the thing that we all have to realize is that we don't need to be chasing love for the things that um, only a, that that we think only a relationship of love can give us because God really is love in the fullness of love. And so <clears throat> and so when we date from the place of love, knowing that we're loved, knowing that we already have that joy, knowing that we have those feelings of fun and mm-hmm. uh, someone we can call on and someone who yeah. is with us, like that is who God has to become before you can actually fully find it in a man. So we were constantly chasing this thing that yeah. we loved. No wonder we loved love. Love is awesome. Love is yeah. in- intense. It's a part of our creation, but it, it has to be in the healthy way. And yeah. and God's version of love is the only true healthy. And then in relationships, it's going to be a little broken, but having God in the center, it keeps yeah. it so, so good. And I think one thing that we can talk about too, and I know we have to move on, but for me, after my little dating rampage and why I was so adamant on like not moving on and not dating someone again the day before I met Christian is because I didn't trust myself. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, it's not only even a man anymore. I don't trust me. Like, I don't think I'm in a good place. Like, I, I don't trust the way that I do relationships. Um, I don't trust the way that I even, like, sometimes I I feel like I can't read people well. I feel like I don't, I'm not setting myself up for success. And I think when you get to the point where you don't trust yourself, um, Mm -hmm. that can be really hard too. And maybe you're there. Maybe you're like, look, it's not even the guy's fault. I don't trust me. And I think that's whenever you really need to sit down and get healthy. And um, that really slowed down the process of me and Christian dating, which I think is what led us to getting, um, having a successful relationship. Yeah, and I think so many people say, like, that cliche quote, like, you'll find them when you're not looking for them. And, yeah. like, I think it's honestly, like, a lot of that is true. Like, it really when is. you finally sit down and you're not worried about it and you're worried about working on yourself and your relationship with the Lord, like, you do find it. And, yeah. like, when you're just looking for every single person ever, mm-hmm. like, you you end up in these crazy relationships mm-hmm. that you never wanted in the first place. Yeah. But when you actually sit down and really work on yourself. Yeah. Work on your relationship with the Lord and focus on who you're with and not with just someone. Yeah. Like, I think the moment you realize you don't need a boyfriend, you don't Mm -hmm. need a guy, you need the man of God that is for you. You don't need just a boyfriend. Like, and I think I so many times, like, I just want a boyfriend. You don't need a status. I just want a boyfriend. Like, I don't, I didn't need that. I needed the person, a good person, like, a good man. I didn't need 
just yeah. to have a man you know like. yeah that's so good mom always says that you can only change you you can only control mm-hmm. you and that's so true because a lot of times we're like oh well if this guy would just do this and if this person would just do this then i'd be happy then i'd be secure then i'd be mm-hmm. that and like don't let your feelings of what you know you need in life to be contingent on another person responding you yeah. know um well anyways we could talk about this all day long but we have to move on i really like um, well, we could really talk about both of these, but my shapeshifter part one, uh, page 46 and 47, yeah. my warrior, which my warrior is kind of short. Um, so read these because I think this is a crucial point and, uh, this is a kind of a turning point in a relationship. Yeah. So this is it. where it starts to get like a little rocky, I think. Um, and I think a lot of people feel this like, oh, oh no, like this, when this starts to happen, it starts to go a little crazy, but um, my shapeshifter part one says, I wake up every day wondering which of you I'll get. Will I get my happy, bold, and smiley boy or my quiet, calm, loving one? Will I get my standoffish, mute, straight-faced boy or my silly, singing, fun one? I love every side of you, even the ones that make me mad. I can't help but love. You are a mystery book I can't stop reading. Which will stop there because that's so good. And I, and I will say, this doesn't necessarily mean this ha- is an unhealthy relationship. Yeah. Like me and Christian, some days like we're really happy and it's really fun and we're dancing and we're singing. And then some days we're just like, yeah. blah, you know? Sure. And like, that's the life. Like you're going to have emotions and you're going to have moods and stuff like that. But I do think you need to be aware of how much one mood is and, and i said that because of this there's a lot of parts in the book and we'll talk about it, is that you're trying to remember like you're trying mm-hmm. to remember the bad things so that you don't get trapped with only mm-hmm. the good thoughts and i like to tell girls i'm like look the first three to like three months of your relationship is not an indication of who they are that is that's going to be fun it's going to be flirty it's going to be silly you're going to be dancing you're going to be getting flowers it's going to be fun it's the months after that that shows Mm -hmm. you who they are and i think a lot of times it's like six months in you see a different side of them and then that that person continues and then from six months to a year they're that person and you're like oh but that's not who they are that's not who they are and you're thinking back Mm -hmm. to the first month you met them it's like well maybe actually they're now showing you who they are yeah (laughs) maybe that wasn't who they are and this now and this now is for sure and i think what this poem is is like it's a little bit of like a indication to what's about to happen in the book yeah but it also like the book could end right there and it would have been happy you know like it would have been fine i said i love every side of you even the ones that make me mad and like that's true of jacob i love every side of him he makes me mad sometimes but i still love him you know yeah and like it could have ended there and been happy but it also like kind of foreshadows what's to come yes i think that's why i wanted to note that is because this is still okay this is Mm -hmm. still okay if people are moody it's still okay if you get mad or annoyed and stuff like that but as you continue, you'll see more of why, um, like, when it, when it shifts to, like, okay, mm-hmm. maybe now I'm only remembering the good times and maybe the good times were a true indication of where you're at as a yeah. person. Um, I also love My Warrior, which was the very next one. Yeah, My Warrior says, Your biggest fear is hurting me in the end. What do I have to do to help you understand there doesn't have to be an end? And how many boys have oh. told you this, like, oh, I just don't want to hurt you. And, like, how many times do you just want to yeah. scream and say... Then don't. It's Then don't. Don't hurt <laughs> yeah. me. There doesn't have to be an end. Like, don't, yeah. you know? And, like, yeah. I feel like that happens in so many relationships. Yeah. And a lot of times, that's another foreshadow that, like, yeah. maybe they are going to hurt you. Yeah. And that's why they're scared to hurt you, and you know? And to be honest, I've experienced this in friendship, too. I've experienced mm-hmm. this with uh, girl friendships where they'll say, like, oh, I just don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. And I'm like no, you're not going to hurt me. Like, why would you hurt me? And, like, you're almost, like, confused why somebody would say that. Like, then don't. Like, just don't leave. Don't hurt me. Don't do that. And it's almost like that person knows that they're not capable of being a friend to you or they're not capable of being in this relationship because they know where they're at spiritually Mm -hmm. or where their health is. And in those moments... Instead of begging, you probably should just listen. Yeah. I think I've hindsight 2020 have learned that. For sure. I used to beg, now I listen. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm like And I think like noted. I said at that one too, like it could cut off right there and like it would have been happy and mm-hmm. might have probably ended well, you know, like people who you end up with could say that to you too. But like also like that could foreshadow like, okay, maybe they're saying they are scared to hurt you because they're probably about to hurt you, yep. you know? And, like, maybe you should, like, say you said, just listen to that, you know? Yeah. 
That's good. Okay, so this one was probably my favorite. This one got me. This one stung <laughs> my heart, okay? It was so accurate. And I think this is where we go from that moodiness to, like, an actual problem. I yeah. think this is what I mean by it, it took a turn. Yeah, for sure. My continual heartbreaker says, Sunrise, it's like we meet again for the first time. Breakfast rolls around and we fall right back in love. Afternoon and we're on cloud nine. Laughter and kisses. Evening comes and we're arguing about the smallest of issues. Yelling and screaming, anger and hurt. By dinner, we don't even know how to talk to each other. Midnight, the moon is up and so are the stars. I'm back in bed, tears streaming down my face. Wondering how we fell this far, I managed to fall asleep. But hours later, the sun rises and paralyzed by time, we wake up and do this all over again. <laughs> this was the story of my dating life. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, it's when so you true. Said, like, and paralyzed by time. I was like, that is literally what happens. You wake up and you run it back. You do yeah, the same thing. You do thing. the same thing every day. You wake up and it's great mm-hmm. and everything's fine. You get, if you're not together, you get the good morning text. You're oh, all yeah. happy. Mm-hmm. You get together, you have a great breakfast. Yep. And then the day goes on. And it just gets worse and worse. And by midnight, you're like, what am I doing? And then, and you, then you really fall asleep. And by the time you've fallen asleep crying, you wake up in the morning and it all starts over again. And at midnight, you're like, this is it. Like, we need to break up. Like, you like you kind of yeah. know. It's like, you know this is wrong. Like, you know, here we go. We did it again. And you're like, okay, tomorrow, like, we're going to have a serious conversation. And then you wake up and it's like, it's good, like morning. good morning. You're like, good morning. I know. I love you. Why? It's like time Why? just like stand still like you yeah. wake up in the morning you have this great morning you go by the time you're in bed you're crying yourself to sleep and then when you wake up you forget about it all yes yeah. it's like and can i tell you something girls out there in the world who are in this pattern um this does happen a lot this has happened to me in a couple of my relationships this did not happen to me in my relationship with christian yeah this is not the story of a good relationship This is the story of an unhealthy relationship. And I think that's what people need to realize. There is an unhealthy type of relationship and there is a healthy. This does not have to be your story. And so if this is your story, then this needs to be the end of your story (laughs) and you need to move on to another greenhouse, you know? For Um, sure. And so I just wanted to make that note because I think people are like, this is how relationships are. No, this is how unhealthy relationships are. Yeah. And I think one thing to note too is like, the reason I write this book is, like, for you to have words to those things and, like, for you to, like, actually realize what, like, that is, you know? And I think, like, say you said, like, this was the story of her dating relationship, you know? And she didn't even see it. No. She was just, like, that paralyzed by time yeah. and wasn't seeing it. And, like, I was there, too. And then once I got out of this relationship, I wrote this. And I was, like, so many people need these words because it's, like, I didn't have those words in that moment. I was like, oh, this is just horrible and life is horrible and every day is horrible and, you know, Um, but but like. If I would have read this book, this would have been an alarm clock. Like this mm -hmm. would have woken me up. If I would have read this book in a relationship, I would have been like, I am literally reading my story right now. Mm -hmm. And it would have woke me up. And so, girls, like if you're reading this and it is an alarm clock, wake up. Like listen to the sound. (laughs) Good morning. Um, I I remember in like this big relationship I was in that all this happened and I remember having like a really hard day, a really rough day together and I sat down and I wrote a poem about it and I just like read it to him and like when mm-hmm. I read it to him he was like, oh, it all makes sense. Like I didn't understand this and now it makes sense and wow. that's what I like wanted with this book is like for girls to like have a way to like express themselves if they don't have those words, yeah. you know, because yeah. like a lot of times you don't have those words and if you need my words take them like use mine like I yeah. I like I used them they were great you know they helped me you know yeah so that's so good Bella okay so you talk about this inconsistent love and one thing that I thought was very important because this is something to majorly know if you're in the situation is you said I can't sit at a stop sign peacefully anymore because this relationship was taking every part of your thought yeah. and I've totally been there where it's like you're so into this relationship where like it's maybe even manipulative it's maybe all consuming it's hurtful you've said things you're arguing constantly so you're constantly playing it all in your head yeah and like what what could you say what should you have said why did he say that what hurts you're dealing with all this stuff and it's so consuming that like you're never at peace yeah and i remember there was a time in my relationship when i was about to end it and someone asked me um sadie do you have peace and I looked her in the face and I said, I'm going to be really honest with you. 
I don't even remember what peace feels like. I, I can't remember the mm-hmm. last time I felt peace. Yeah. That is not good. That is not healthy. In mm-hmm. fact, Jesus it, it talks about this part of the fruit of the Spirit. The Bible talks about this is that there is a fruit of the Spirit of God that is peace. And so when yeah. you're living in a healthy relationship or you're living it within um, a godly relationship, part of the fruit of that should be peace. Mm -hmm. And so when I was in this relationship for years and I couldn't remember what peace felt like, that should have told me this is not a good relationship and this is not the relationship I need to be in because this is not a relationship that God is in, you know? For sure. I love that. Um, Well, I love that you said that because I think that that is a wake-up call for people. Now my indecisive one. I think this is um, important, mainly the last thing that you said. Yeah, so the whole poem talks about how, like, someone just – like, you don't get to just have me when you want me. Mm-hmm. Not everything is on your terms. Like, that's what this is talking about. When she's not responding, all of a sudden you miss me. I don't deserve that. Because if this is how someone treated my friend, that would be exactly what I would tell her. You don't deserve that, pretty girl. And, like, Sheesh. I remember, like, writing this. I remember being there and being, like, oh, Like, I just constantly sit and I wallow in my thoughts about if Maybe, maybe, maybe you'll just call me or maybe mm-hmm. you'll text me. Or maybe you'll love me today. Or maybe you will be there today, you know. And, like, I, like, all of a sudden remember sitting down and thinking, like, if this was how someone treated anyone else that I loved, like, I would never, ever let that happen, you know. Yep. That's what I always tell girls whenever they say, like, but he's my best friend. And I'm like, but does any one of your best friends treat you like this? (laughs) Yeah. No. Then then this is not your best friend. This is just your emotions, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I love that you said that. And if you look at uh, your relationship and say, I would tell any of my friends to get out, then might should pay attention to that. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's move on. I want you to talk about my straightforward love. So my straightforward love um, is talking about how someone once told me that you could be with someone a billion times better than me. And I told them, no, I don't want better, I just want you. And I said, foolishness. Looking back, I think, how do you not know you're better than that? But the truth of the matter is that that is what love does to you. Love makes you forget all of the bad things. When love feels threatened, it sends all of the sweetest memories to the forefront of your mind so that even if you wanted to, even if you knew it was true, you couldn't agree. Mm. And I think in that moment, it's just like, like I said, like when love feels threatened, it's going to send all the sweetest memories to your, to the forefront of your mind. And like, and maybe it's not love. Maybe that's the wrong word for it because it's probably not actually love. But Mm -hmm. I do think that's what happens. Like when you feel like, oh no, like this isn't good. Like someone like thinks they could, like I could be with someone. No, 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 you couldn't actually like, no, mm-hmm. no, no, I don't want better. I just want you. Like, mm-hmm. I like you so much. I want you. I don't want better. And, you, yeah. and like, it's almost like lust even. Like, when lust feels threatened, of course, it sends all the mm-hmm. attractive images to your mind. And in yeah. relationship, too, it's like, no, no, no. Like, you still want me. Like, you're you're almost mm-hmm. addicted to me. You, yeah. you crave me uh, because of all these good things. Yeah. But lust hurts you. Yeah. Lust is not love. And in the long run, it's like, actually no why am i fighting for less whenever i could have love yeah you know? and it's like i said like you could be with someone a billion times better than me and like in that moment like i didn't want to be that person who could be with better i wanted yeah. to be with the lowest of the low you know yeah, like, like, i didn't want to be with better i want i didn't want to be the person who yeah. need who deserved better like i wanted to be the person who deserved you because like <laughs> i like you liked me at one point and like that made me want you you know I remember I had a guy tell me that too. You could be with anyone you want. I'm like, no, but I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. And I think that a lot of times when guys say that, it's out of their insecurity, knowing Mm -hmm. that, knowing that I'm not treating you in a way that you deserve. And again, instead of arguing and begging, you should probably just listen. Yeah. So um, my boy, who's not all that, says, I laugh when people think I have the perfect life. The perfect face, the perfect body, with the perfect friendships, and of course, the perfect boy. Little do they know, it's all so far from perfect. And I think this is one of the only poems in the book that really isn't about relationships too much. And I think it's a lot about my life. Like, I think a lot of people look at me and would like to say, like, oh, she has the perfect life and the perfect boyfriend and the perfect body and face and you know and like people can think that from instagram but like no one really knows you know Mm -hmm. my real life you know and like now like of course like i'm married to like the most amazing man and like love him so much but like 
at the time when I had these boyfriends, people were just praising these relationships. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, these are the best. And, like, it almost made me not want to, like, lose that relationship. Because I was like, oh, well, people are saying it's the best. People are saying it's awesome. Like, I people love it, you agree. know? I agree. I literally wrote about this in my book, too, that, like, almost people's comments and stuff convinced me that it was real. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we are relationship goals. Like, oh, we are really cute. Yeah. Oh, like, people think that we're awesome. Maybe we are. But, like, I knew we weren't. Like, yeah. But their comments helped me say in something that was yeah. like, unhealthy, which is crazy. But and it, only it's you true. know that, you know. Yeah. Like, only you and the people close to you and the people who love you know that. And like, mm-hmm. that is one of the big downfalls with Instagram is like, so many people like look at you and like think they know, and like it's really hard on sometimes on the people who are behind the screen because it's like. No, like, you don't know. Like, you don't know what's going on, you know? And I remember um, when me and that person broke up, like, I got messages on Instagram saying, like, why did y'all break up? Like, y'all were so perfect. Like, did he dump you? Did you do something wrong? Like, and it was just, like, so overwhelming for me to think, like, you have no idea. You know, you don't know. And, like, that's when I wrote this. Like, like, so many people think this and, like, at the end of the day, like, you mm-hmm. don't know everything. And to be honest, this is not just an Instagram influencer issue. This is, like, maybe you're, like, the it couple at your school. Maybe yeah. you're the couple that's been together for three years. Maybe you're the couple that everyone loves. And since y'all were little, everyone said you're going to get married. Yeah. But, like, just because everyone thinks something, only you know. Only you know if this is a healthy relationship. Only you know if this is yeah. the guy for you. No relationship's going to be perfect. But only you know if it's perfect, you know? Um, and if it's not, then it's okay to upset everyone else's expectations yeah. rather than you actually having like a, a sad life you know yeah and um, you do have to like uh, one day like I said earlier like you have to move on like you have to be the one to choose that and like you have to be the one like when everyone else is praising a relationship that you know is wrong like mm-hmm. you have to be the one to make that decision for yourself you can't just rely on everyone no. else to tell you what to do because no one else knows and like Mm. even if your family like everyone loves your boyfriend or something and everyone's like why would y'all ever break up like Mm. y'all are perfect we love him you know like like you have to be the one to choose that for yourself you have to be the one when you know the real story to like make that decision Mm -hmm. yep even if it shocks everyone it's okay it's okay um okay um let's go to my one who keeps me guessing And I thought this was an important point because I do think this is the part of relationships that people don't expect to be bad and it's the Mm -hmm. worst. Yes, because I think a lot of times the first things I said I noted are like the ones everyone thinks about and you don't think about this next one. But it says, um, the fall, the love, the ache, the break, the the worst of them all must be the wondering. Mm. And I think that's so true, like. The ache and the break are horrible, but, like, the wondering what's going to happen like, is... Like, what is he thinking? Like, what is, is he, he going to get another yes. relationship? Is he going to call me? Is he going to text me? What does yes. this mean? He did text me. Uh, are we going to give it together? Has he changed? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Like, and that's the whole thing on closure, too. It's like, it's like you can't just wait on someone, and you can't just wonder and wonder and wonder and wonder and wonder. Like, at some point, you have to just say, okay, it's over. Like, I'm done. I'm moved yep. on. Like, even if you weren't, I'm moved on. Like, yep. I can't sit here and just wonder yep. all day long. And some of you might wonder, how do I stop wondering? How do I stop yeah. my mind from going there? Because my mind is constantly thinking about him. It's constantly thinking about what we were. It's constantly wanting to go back. I mean, literally, the Bible says, you have to take captive your thoughts like Mm -hmm. take them captive like shift your thought pattern and to shift your thought pattern you actually have to like shift it you have to say something you have to say like like in your mind or out loud like nope like I used to say nope like out loud because I'm like I'm not gonna think about that anymore yeah and I would think about the verse like think about whatever is true whatever is lovely whatever is pure whatever is admirable whatever is just for like think about these things and honestly that verse is like pretty long it has so many words that sometimes I'd forget the verse but it would help me get off the thought pattern I'd be like whatever is true whatever is lovely whatever is kind yeah and like even just having something to like combat the thoughts of relationship helped me to move forward and so I think you need to get something in your mind that you think about when you think Mm -hmm. about that person yeah and we weren't actually going to read this one but it just came to my mind um but it's on page 82 it says my unreliable boy and it talks about where do we stand in the wondering when where do we stand when i don't know if you're coming home when do i get to say okay enough when do i get to set call but you said forever when who do i get to run to when your love runs out who do i get to tell when you say it was a game what do i do when it's just me left with the wondering, left without. 
Mm. And like the truth is when you're left in wondering, you're left without. Like you're mm. left without someone. You're left without something. Mm-hmm. You're missing. You feel like you're missing something. Yep. And like the truth is you're not. Like mm-hmm. you have the Lord and like if you like have the Holy Spirit in your heart, like you have peace and joy and patience mm-hmm. and kindness and goodness, and faithfulness, self-control. Yep. You know, you have all these things and you have a friend and you have yeah a companion you know and like and in that time like a feeling like you're just wondering like you feel like you're missing something but yeah. like you have to rest assured that you're mm-hmm. not you know and isolation is like one of the most dangerous places to be and i think the wondering is the only place that you're really left alone because with the fall and the break and all those things like people are in it with you like people yeah. know you broke up people know where you're at people know it's hard no one knows your thoughts no yeah. one knows that you're constantly thinking about this person that you're constantly thinking about what was that you're constantly thinking about the hurts or the or the good times or whatever it yeah. is and so if you don't invite the lord into your thought life because that's the only person who can be in then you really are in a dangerous zone you know yeah. because you're left with thoughts that can be totally irrational yeah and i remember writing like who do i get to run to when your love runs out and I remember writing that and the feeling of like, like, who do I get to tell this to? Because like in that time I was also wondering. So I was like, if you come back, I don't want to tell everyone mm-hmm. that you stopped loving me. You know, like I don't want to yep. tell everyone this. So like I'm wondering, like, who do I get to run to? Because I don't know who to tell. Like, yeah. you know, and I remember feeling that so deeply. Like, I don't want to tell any. Like, I didn't tell. I was like, I don't want to tell anyone I broke up with them because I don't want anyone to think anything wrong. I don't want to think anyone to think that I was wrong or I did anything wrong like Mm -hmm. I just wanted to like hide from it all and like I didn't think there was anyone I could run to but the truth is like you do need like isolation is such a scary place to be Mm -hmm. and like you need community and you do have to talk to people yeah that's why even the Bible says like confess your sins to one another like Mm -hmm. even like yes confess to God but like also talk about it with like to a friend because you can't carry it all by yourself because if you do like you'll make Mm -hmm. bad decisions because like what your friend does not have is the emotions that you have. So your friend can say, hey, look, I know this feels this way, but this is what truth is. This is Mm -hmm. an unhealthy relationship. And sometimes you can't see that. And they can say, hey, you don't need to go back to that. Because I remember after I got out of this relationship that was not good for me that I was in for a while, um, years went by and then this mm-hmm. person showed interest in me again and I almost went back and I remember somebody was like how how much do you like and like how much do you want to go back out of 10 I was like 10 but I had told this person everything bad like I had told them like all the bad things all the hard things the unhealthy things and she's like okay like let's think about this for a second like why do you want him so bad and it was because I could only remember the good things mm-hmm. I could and I was just yeah and so your friend needs to be in on it with you because she can remind you or your parents or your family that they can remind you like hey I know it feels this way I know this is what your emotions are telling you but the truth is this is not a healthy relationship for you and this is not you at your best you know yep. and you have to be willing to listen so there was one that goes kind of with everything I'm saying um about how like when you're not healthy, like it stills the essence of mm-hmm. who you are, you know, like when you're in an unhealthy relationship, it can still the essence of who you are. And like only sometimes a friend can say that to you. It's like, you're not being yourself. Like mm-hmm. we're losing you. And sometimes you don't even realize it. And I think my love that left me really um, captures that beautifully. Yeah. Um, so it says the weeks following the end of our flame were a blur. I was never fully there. And if my body was, it's safe to say my mind wasn't. Everywhere I went, my head was somewhere else. I could hear, but I wasn't listening. I could touch, but I wasn't feeling. I could watch, but I wasn't seeing. Why is it fair that no one got all of me because you wanted none of me? And I think, like, that happens so much. You, like, the one before this says, actually, um, that um, ever since you, I don't show up. I don't smile as big. I I don't bring the party. I'm not the same person I was and like I felt that like I didn't feel like I was myself anymore Mm. I felt like I lost something yeah and like the truth is like like it's not fair that no one gets you because someone didn't want you yeah and like um I actually wrote this one day when I was at lunch with you I read it after being at lunch with you because me and Sadie went to lunch together and I remember getting home and thinking I have no idea what we talked about like I don't even remember what we talked about I don't remember what we did I don't remember Like, I don't remember anything about that lunch because Mm -hmm. my mind was in a different place. And I remember thinking that's so unfair that I just had lunch with my sister. It was probably a great day. She probably didn't think anything of it. It was probably, um, like, an awesome lunch. And I don't remember any of it. And I remember thinking that's so unfair 
that someone wanted none of me. Someone didn't even want me. And, like, I can't give myself to anyone else because of yeah, that. You wow. Know? That's so real. And the thing is, like, so many people do want you and so many mm-hmm. people do love you. Even me that day, like, I love you. I wanted to be at lunch with you. But yeah. because this other person who didn't care for your heart is uh, making you feel less than, like, you couldn't be present with me. And yeah. I do think, like, y'all need to realize that, that just because one person doesn't love you doesn't mean you're unlovable. Just because one person didn't want you doesn't mean that you're unwanted. Like, there are people in your life who are outside of that one person with their own messed up problems who love you and want you and cherish you and see the things in you that God has put in you and wants to cheer you on and to do not make your world so small that it revolves around one human. Yeah. (laughs) That is very important. Yeah, for sure. And, like, just a few poems before that, actually, I wrote, like, How are you? Everyone asks. Every part of me wants to say I'm so good, but I close my eyes I hear my screams, I feel my shattered heart, I can see my tears, and I shake my head, swell my pride, and say, you know, I've been better. And, like, that was, like, a really raw moment for me to, like, not just say, oh, I'm good, because I think we do that so much, and I think that's what led me to, like, not being where I was, because I kept saying I'm so good, and I wasn't, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, I just thought, like, that's really important, because, like, when you're in that moment, like, that's how you get to those moments yep. where you aren't there. That's how you get to where yep. you're not present with others is when you just fake it and say, oh, I'm good, I'm good, yeah. I'm good. And you don't say, you know, I've been better. Like, I'm not good yep. right now and I'm not okay. Yeah, that's something about myself that I want to work on because I always say that, like, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And then, like, a year later, I'll be like, oh, I was in the worst spot ever. And everybody's like, what? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I probably should have said that because people would have walked through it with me and yeah. like so and, yes and just like we said like you lose that time like yeah. you lose that time wasting it being in your head like oh I'm good and then you're sitting there like oh I'm not good at all yeah that's you know? so true all right let's read two more okay. two more this is one of my favorite ones as well I think it's very crucial because it talks about remembering and that's the thing I talked about you forget like you mm-hmm. think you could never forget the pain you think you could never forget the tears you think you could never yeah. forget how <laughs> mad you were and how horrible it was and then the minute they come back with a sweet text you're like gone yeah I love you let's get that together sure. um and that's wrong and so I thought this one was was great so let's read it I close my eyes because my mind is playing a film The opening scene pulls me in as it shows you flashing that pretty little smile at me. I laugh as it shows your eyes wandering around the room with the hope that they don't somehow meet up with mine. My heart races as I watch you throw me over your shoulder in the pouring rain and hurry me to the car. But even though I know the ending, nothing prepares me for the final scene. When you walk away for the very last time, with swollen eyes, I try to remember every detail. Every muscle in your back, every hair on your head, I must remember... For times like this, when I forget how cruel the ending is and I want to watch again, I must remember. Mm, It's so good because it's so true. You want to watch it again because you only remember the beginning. But then when you see the end, you're like, oh, yeah, that wasn't good for me. Yeah. Um, The last one I want to read is very hopeful in my past life. And I think that this is what I want to read because I want people to understand, yes, you go through those things. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it sucks. Yes, it feels like the end, but it's not. And you will move on. You might be in the place right now. You're like, I will never move on. I can't move on. You don't know my story. We might not have walked in the exact shoes you walked in, but we have walked in some very similar. Mm -hmm. And so um, this is your hope that there will be a day that you won't think about him anymore. There will be a day where you don't cry over the heartbreak. And there will be a day when you look up and you see the love of your life. And it's all okay. Yep. You feel like another lifetime. To merely think of you is an out-of-body experience. Me with you and me without you, two people I've known deeply. Although one keeps drifting further and further away, between me and you, I just can't keep up anymore. I love that. And I know there's more joy at the end of my past, but I thought that was good to just show you moved on. Like, you moved on. Your mind moved on. Your heart moved on. Your life moved Mm -hmm. on. And now you're sitting here. Let's actually think about you for a second. A married woman in a healthy relationship with a good man. Not that you won't have problems. Not that you won't have annoyances. But but you're in a healthy relationship and the fruit of Jesus is in it. God is in it. And um, I'm so proud of you. And I'm so proud of you for articulating all of this in a book and giving girls the words to say and the to attach with the emotions that they feel that are sometimes mm-hmm. uh, 
very hard to understand, you know? Yeah. And I just want to say to all of you, if you've listened to this podcast and you're like, I just listened to an hour of this book and I'm so inspired, I'm so encouraged, you haven't even read the half of it. <laughs> like, that that was some highlights that I loved, but everyone is so good. I, I really could have read all of them, but I don't want to give away everything in this book. And so please go get My Greenhouse. It will um, help you through the the good times, the hard times, the unbearable times, and you know, send you forth into a great future. Maybe you've already moved on. You're like me and Bella, you're married. You're like, I'm good. I don't want to relive that. But it actually is very healing. It, it's yeah. like, it, it kind of reminds you of it, but in a sweet way yeah. that, hey, I, I went through that, but I'm stronger now. I moved on. And so I hope this encourages you. I know it will. Bella, you crushed it. Thank I can't you. believe you did Thank this you. at your age. And I can't I, even not even just your age. I can't believe that you did this because this is a gift to the world. And so thank you for writing this book. Everyone go get it. You can get it anywhere books are sold, right? Yep. Anywhere books are sold. Thank you so much. My real hope for the book is that it brings healing to anyone who reads it and it brings you words to your pain and words to your joy. And I hope that um, whoever reads this finds some sort of healing or even just some sort of joy just to yeah. reminisce, you know. Well, um, but anyways, that's exactly yeah. anywhere books are sold. what you did. Anywhere books are sold, go get it. And follow Bella on Instagram. <laughs> Bella, what is your Instagram handle? Is it just Bella it's Rob? Bella Rob Maya. Bella Rob Maya. Go Maya. follow her. Keep up with her life because it's awesome. Thank Bye, you. Guys.